Quick review of our four main points. We'll start with the grip. The ball rests comfortably yet firmly in the palm of your hand with fingers spread evenly. Next, the stance. Stand erect yet relaxed at the center of the approach. Eyes on target and the ball between nose and waist. The approach. Slight bend at the waist and fluid movement without rushing to the foul line. And finally, the follow through. We'll give you two versions. First from behind. Remember, stay down at the line and extend your release upward while staying down at the line until you're absolutely sure the ball is well on its way. I think what we should do at this point is uh, have you maybe roll a game, and, and I'll score it because a lot of people seem uh, intimidated by the bowling scoring system, which is very simple. You probably have people come up to you every day at your bowling center and, uh, and ask for lessons on keeping score. Exactly right. All right. So you give the lessons on the bowling, I'll give the lessons on the scorekeeping, and uh, everybody will be happy. Okay, let's All have right, a go. go to it. A bowling game is comprised of a total of ten frames with a maximum number of three balls per frame. And on the first frame, Dan throws a strike. Requires just one ball for the frame, and that's a total of ten pins. However, there are two bonus balls that will now be added to the ten pins on the strike. So it's ten plus the total number of pins knocked down on the next two bonus balls. And there's another strike, ten pins on the first bonus ball. And when you get into a multiple strike situation, it can get a little bit confusing. If you need a little help, don't be afraid to ask the bowling center proprietor. He or she will be very happy to explain it to you. Now, from one extreme to the other. Half whisted to the left. So two pins, the second bonus ball on the first strike, giving us 22 pins in the first frame. In this case, I'm going to go for the head pin and see if I can pick out three or four of them. And a total of seven pins for the frame. So we uh, can add up all the bonus ball situations now. And comes out to 45 pins in the third frame. 45 through three into the fourth now. Yeah, that was a break when that seven pin went down. These I like. <laughs> the reason Dan likes them is because you have a little broader target with the pin lying down in front of the five pin. Easier to make that way. Nice shot. Now if I concentrate on hitting the head pin on this lane three, I'm going to stay down. Square up my shoulders to the target. Uh, a spare is ten pins plus the total number of pins on the next ball, which is nine. Seven pin. So we add 19 to 45, giving us 64 through four. Oh, tough judgment call. Do we give him a spare or don't we? Well, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Give Dan a spare. But if the ball goes into the channel before it hits the pins, any pins that go down as a result do not count on the score. But... For demonstration purposes, we'll give them the spare. So 10 plus the bonus ball is 6. 16 to 64 is 80. Try to hit the two pin and the wood at the same time. A little bit too full on that shot. Very important in the third ball is grab as many pins as you can. Total of 8 for the frame. 88. A lot of bowlers give up on the third ball. Very, very important. Get as many as you can with an all-important third ball. So through six frames, Dan Murphy has a total of 88 pins. And now a six drop. Four horsemen right side. Trying to split the one and the three. Oh. Well, need a little more luck there. Everything but the ten pin. Well, he hit it where he should between the one and the three, but the ball was deflected around the left side of the ten pin, which he gets... And a 10 is signified by putting an X in the frame, 98 through 7. Again, concentrate on hitting the head. And a total 9 drop. And uh, once again, Dan has a little piece of wood to work with up front. You have to watch the double piece of wood here. I think if I go right at the 5 pin, the ball should carry it. And a nice shot. So a spare on the eighth frame, and once again, a spare is scored. Ten pins plus the uh, total number of pins knocked down on the very next ball. So it's ten plus the number of pins right here, which again is nine, giving us 19 to 98, or a total of 117 in the eighth. And I'm going to try to cover the four pin. A little more difficult shot without the help of any wood up front. And a nice shot. Spare for Dan Murphy in the ninth as we go into the tenth. Okay, tenth frame. 
Again, timing seems to be fairly good at this point. Stay down, follow through. Working on the spare. This is the bonus ball. Seven to 117, 134 through nine. I'm actually going to play the six pin with a piece of wood in front of it. See if I can snap the wood over into the other two. Very difficult shot. Going for the right side. Yeah, nice yes. shot. Beautiful. Oh, Irish luck there. Come on, Dan. Don't be so modest. That was a great shot. So a spare working. Ten plus whatever Dan throws on this ball to 134. Add 17 to the score for 151. <laughs> what a great game. Oh, Lady Lucky was with me. You really make it look easy, but I'm sure it's taken a lot of years to get to be as good as you are today. Well, when you want to be proficient at anything, Mike, it takes, it requires repetition. And Candlepin Bowling is no different. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I suggest each and every one of you watch the video as many times as you think you need to, and then go down to your local bowling center, bowl a few games of practice, maybe even join the league. But practice continuously and have fun. I'm Dan Murphy. And I'm Mike Moran. Thanks for watching. All right. Good game.